Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's discuss Starry Grades once again. This is actually a continuation of a relatively long series, where we try to explore some of the new discoveries, and usually some of the more unusual discoveries, when it comes to our little indestructible friends, tardigrades, water bears, moss piglets, or essentially the creatures you see right here. They do have lots of different names, but in the last few years have developed a very specific reputation. They're now known as some of the most indestructible animals on planet Earth. They can withstand extreme conditions including extreme temperatures, extreme pressures, high salinity, and high acidity. They can also tolerate very dry conditions, surviving without water for several years. They've been exposed to outer space and survived that as well. And they've even been fired from a gun. And the video about that experiment should be right there in the description as well. And as of today, we know of at least 1500 separate species living in various conditions in various parts of the world, and they actually seem to exist pretty much everywhere. They've been discovered in the Antarctica, and of course the Arctic, they're also present in the tropics, they've been found on some of the highest mountains and even on the bottom of the ocean, and they've basically been living on the planet for at least 540 million years, surviving every major extinction event. But obviously, in order to survive all of this, and in order to become so resilient, they had to have developed some kind of a genetic trick, or basically a bunch of tricks, that in the past few years a lot of researchers desperately tried to learn more about and essentially tried to understand, because some of these tricks could be applied to humans. And so basically here the question was, what exactly allows them to survive such extreme conditions, including extreme radiation and extreme desiccation? And so once again, a lot of previous videos in the description discuss discoveries from the last few years, with some of them actually being kind of groundbreaking. But today we're going to discuss a few more discovered in 2024 that once again change our perspective maybe just a little bit. Although here to start, I actually wanted to begin with something a little bit more fun. And specifically this, Tardigrade Rodeo. An absolutely incredible video captured by Quentin Geldhoff, who posted this on Instagram with the link in the description, his handle is microhobbyist, that was featured by Nikon Small World in Motion video competition, and who basically won $600 for this unusual video. And here there's even a story behind this. This is a baby tardigrade riding its biggest predator, a nematode, with all this potentially happening completely by accident. Apparently here, inside the sample, there was actually a bunch of tardigrade eggs, and a bunch of nematodes. And once the egg hatched, the little baby here wanted to grab something because he was basically just dangling in the middle of nowhere. And it just so happens that he hitched a ride on his biggest predator. This is basically like baby zebra riding a lion. And so we don't actually know what happened to this baby afterwards, but let's assume that it lived a very long productive life and became a very important part of its tardigrade society. Yeah, anyway, very very cool video. And definitely something we don't see every day. But apart from being eaten by nematodes, let's basically talk about how they survive everything else. And turns out that a lot of this protection is actually offered by a very specific protein. It's known as cytoplasmic abundant heat soluble protein D or CAX D. And in pretty much most species studied so far, it seems to protect from extreme drying or desiccation and also seems to be responsible for the general protection of cell structure inside tardigrades. Now the actual mechanism is still kind of being studied, but in essence, these CAXD proteins transform the cells into a gel-like state whenever there is any kind of dramatic stress. For example, in extremely dry conditions, the cells gelatinize, which then keeps the molecules protected and prevents the cells from drying. Now, usually this also involves the tardigrades turning into what's known as the tan state, or basically these tiny balls that become dehydrated and become gelatinized, allowing tardigrades to survive pretty much anything, but it's these proteins that potentially drive everything. And so in this recent study, researchers wanted to actually see Ok, what would happen if we put these into human cells? Not into actual humans, but just stem cells that were raised in lab conditions. And so here by using human embryonic kidney cells, and allowing these kidney cells to produce this protein as well, they actually discovered that whenever exposed to stress, these human cells also turn them gel-like in consistency, and slow down their metabolism, protecting them from stressful conditions. And this made them a lot more resistant to stress, 
even allowing them to become suspended in biostasis, where the organism was able to tolerate environmental changes. And that of course includes desiccation and even very cold conditions. And so here these human cells seem to have survived in a very similar way to how tardigrades survive as well. And then, once the cells returned to regular conditions, these gel structures dissipated, with all of the proteins disappearing in the process. So basically here, human cells return to their normal metabolism. Which is actually a groundbreaking discovery, assuming this can work with more complex structures. And that's actually a big asterisk. Right now this only worked for individual cells, so we have no idea if this would work for a larger tissue. But assuming that it can be used, this is actually great news for a lot of medical fields. For example, this could easily allow us to transfer various organs for organ transplantation, or even use various cell-based therapies where the cells can be stored for a very long time. But that's a very, very big if. There's been previous studies that actually cautioned against using this because a lot of these proteins could also be maybe dangerous to humans. So we don't really know exactly what's going to happen to a much more complex organism. But for simple human cells, this gelling process seems to actually work too, just like it works for tardigrades. But then there was actually another study that decided to study some of the other mechanisms in order to discover what else tardigrades can do. And specifically focusing on a species known as Hypsibius canonensis, only discovered six years ago. And here the researchers discovered close to 15,000 proteins, with approximately 4,500, or basically one third of them, being unique to tardigrades. And so in this study, Li Li and his team focused on one species of tardigrades and blasted them with a lot of radiation, observing gene expression, and trying to understand how the defense mechanism worked. Here these tardigrades were able to survive doses of at least a thousand times more radiation than what would be technically lethal to humans. And in essence, they discovered three separate mechanisms, all able to protect tardigrades from radiation. First one is related to a gene called DODA1. This seems to actually have come from bacteria, so it was essentially a kind of a stolen gene, and it seems to be responsible for production of a pigment known as betalein. These pigments generally destroy dangerous molecules and essentially act like antioxidants. Then they had a lot of DNA repair mechanisms, with one specific one related to a protein called TRID1, basically responsible for repairing DNA extremely fast, thousands of times more efficient than anything inside humans or more complex animals. And then they also had additional defense in various non-tardigrade specific genes, specifically genes in, for example, mitochondria. Here there was a huge chain of really complex assembly proteins that mediated DNA damage repair. This was actually inside mitochondrial DNA, which as you might know already, is responsible for the energy production inside the cell. And so in other words, even their mitochondria have evolved to be exceptionally resistant to pretty much everything. And so in essence there are multiple steps and multiple mechanisms responsible for protecting tardigrades from just radiation alone with many of these mechanisms being unique to tardigrades and involving complex processes. And last but not least is also their ability to, for some reason, resist microplastics. And this is an extremely recent discovery and is also just as bizarre as everything else. And here this was not just an observational discovery, this was an experiment. Flavia de França and her team from Brazil collected a huge sample consisting of 5,700 individual organisms on the northeast coast of Brazil during a low tide. And here they had a lot of stuff. Different types of worms, different types of shrimp, crustaceans, mites, all sorts of different larvae, and of course, tardigrades. And for this experiment, they decided to keep all of them inside a tank, resembling the conditions on the beach. But they also added 100 grams of microplastic sediment that was stained to be fluorescent. In other words, it would glow in the dark. And then they essentially allow these creatures to live in these conditions just to see where the microplastics would go and if it would affect the creatures in any way. Now here these particles were actually really small, around one thousandth of a millimeter, which would technically make them nanoplastics. And after some time, without exception, pretty much all creatures eventually started to show signs of microplastics inside their bodies. Specifically, this was actually the first ever evidence that various types of flatworms including worms known as hairy backs, seem to actively consume microplastics, accumulating a lot of them inside their bodies. And because in many cases these worms are then eaten by something larger, this essentially suggests that microplastics 
can definitely be transferred up the food chain and eventually accumulate in a lot of apex predators. Which is also probably why we actually have so many microplastics inside our bodies right now. Once again, the video in the description discusses a lot of this unnerving stuff in a lot more detail. And in most cases, these microplastics were just eaten directly. Sometimes because they were actually covered in bacteria consumed by many of these creatures, and sometimes because they resembled their natural food. But not these guys. Of all of the tiny creatures, only tardigrades seem to contain nothing inside. Or they actually contain some on the outside, mostly stuck to their legs, but absolutely nothing inside their bodies. And though it's not entirely clear why, it possibly could be the result of how they usually ingest food. They basically normally pierce food with their mouth tube and usually use it to suck things, which is something that's very difficult to do with a typical microplastic. And so basically here they might have tried to eat them, they just couldn't. But that's of course just a hypothesis. The actual results just indicate that tardigrades were more or less microplastic free. With additional discovery here also suggesting that these plastic polluted conditions actually decrease the overall species richness and overall density of the fauna living inside. In other words, plastic pollution equals not very good. It basically seems to act like a lot of other pollution with a lot of unknown effects. Either way though, this once again shows that there is another thing that they can definitely survive, even if it kills everyone around them. Which means that they'll probably survive the next extinction event as well, no matter what causes it. But at least for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. There are definitely going to be a lot more discoveries in the next few months, and so in the next part, we'll discuss those as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about biology, space sciences, and other sciences, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.